Scotty, where have you been the last two years? Last two years, I've just been hanging out with Cable and been working with Justin Everett and Damian Liddy doing a bit of roofing and trying to just, not really trying to like lay low, but just got a chick now and just been cruising, not really into the whole competition scene, so I've just been having fun, <laughs> surfing heaps and just, yeah. Well, I like the way you said uh, you've got a chick now, does that mean you're married? Because uh, we've actually got footage of, yeah. of your wedding. Uh, tell us about that, how did that all come about? Well, we, ca we came over here two weeks ago and we wanted to get married over here and we just kind of put it out there to the governor and then all of a sudden he put on this full-fledged wedding for us and it was, we couldn't have planned a better wedding if we tried, so we're pretty lucky. That would have been so, so surreal. Yeah. It was pretty cool having like all my mates here, everyone from around the world as well. So. so this isn't your first time to the Philippines? No, I've been here three times before and I love the place, keep coming back. Stoked. What are some of the finer points you like about the Philippines? I just love it how your money goes real far and you get massages and and everyone's so friendly. It's just awesome. <laughs> everyone's awesome. I love this place. <laughs> and I grow the game of my life. But my words be building, consoling with wisdom. And I speak a matter of times. Not preaching, but speaking from readings and believing. Bedtime, it's stories with family. Later, learned and believed in. Found ourselves a Sam Shafey Shafe here at the Massage Huts by the lake. Sam, um, how's the massage going? Oh, it's fantastic, man. Eh? These girls know what they're doing. Had a couple here so far, but yeah, it's good to get a rub down before we go and have a ride. Shafey, you're really just immersing yourself in the culture. Can you tell us a little bit about the food as well? It's, uh, it's here in the Philippines. The food over here, I'm loving it. I mean, I'm a food man myself. Um, they got the buffet over there. You can just chow into that all day. But if you're not into like, that's sort of more traditional food. If you're more into just Western food, some more plain stuff. Um, you've also got the menu, you can order chicken burgers and the CWC burgers just like pretty much a quarter pounder. So it's all good times. Yeah, and they've got Westernized restaurants and stuff as well, right? Yeah, it's awesome. We went into a sick restaurant last night called Max's. Um, there was about six of us and we pretty much bought out the whole restaurant. We had like, I don't know, maybe 12 plates out all at one time. The service was amazing. You just get... Like, they're just out, no worries. You raise your hand, they're there saying, oh, what would you like, so... And the food is awesome. It's like as good as any of the food you get in any Aussie restaurant, so... Oh, I was stoked with it. Hey, look. Let's get down to business a little bit here. Um, there's a few changes happening with uh, wakeboarding on the cable circuit, and one of those things has been judging. Can you just talk us through what's happening with the judging? You know, who looks at what and how they judge the uh, the cable contests here. Yeah, I've been lucky enough this week to be asked to be one of the judges, and um, the whole way this WWA format is going, they, they're sort of trying to turn it all into who's the best overall rider. So who's the best on kickers, who's the best on sliders, who's the best behind the bow, who's the best on the winch. They're sort of, sort of trying to mould it all into one. So they've got a new judging format um, where it runs 30% kickers, 30% sliders and then 40% composition. Um, so sort of how that works is the top end riders that are throwing out hammer tricks, that'll do a good run and throw out a hammer at the end. Um, whereas people that we throw a hammer at, at the start of their run are going to get more rewarded and, and the people that sort of have that even mix of tricks that aren't just throwing down one big trick, the people that have thrown down maybe four hard tricks will beat someone that will do three sort of easy tricks and then one massive hammer. A lot of our viewers are boat riders as well as cable riders and uh, the boat riders will probably understand the intensity, the composition um, and all that side of things. Is that how cable is kind of going? Definitely, it's definitely going that way. I mean, as a judge, when you're out there, you want to see the guys going as big as they can and grab everything because that's impressive, you know? 
So that's definitely the way this sport is going and it's great to see a whole heap of the boat riders have come over here and they're actually riding in the comp this week. They've got the obstacles only comp and you've seen the guys, it's like a 10 minute jam um, session and they're going out and just throwing down like straight off the bat there's skis of fives, front mode fives, seeing toe side backside five transfers over the fun box. These guys are just out of control. <laughs> Wow, so it's like almost like a, a street skate park session, you know, you've got a whole bunch of kids cutting laps and just hitting everything as hard as they can. Well that's pretty much what it's all turning to, you know, it's, it's great to see that sort of how snowboarding and skateboarding affects the industry and wakeboarding as well, um, but it's definitely how it's going now, like they want to see the best rider in the world is going to be the best rider that can ride boat, cable and hit kicks and sliders on winch parks as well. Nice. Yes. Nice. Look, uh, I don't want to take up too much of your massage time. You need to just spend some time relaxing there, so I'm going to just toddle off and leave you to it. Thanks for your time, yeah, Shafi. No Cheers, Val. Oh.